Hi guys, this is Ashley back with another video. Before we get into the video, like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you turn on post notifications. Is Young Money gonna help Nicki Minaj make amends with Camel Toe? So the next year's Super Bowl is allegedly going to be in New Orleans in 2025. Now, Three Dreads, a.k.a. Wayne, um, has put out a statement saying that he is praying um, that he could headline the halftime show for next year's Super Bowl. He said, we're keeping our fingers crossed. I'm working hard. I will make sure this next album and everything I do is killer. I just want to make it hard for them to not holler at the boy. I could be like Riri. Riri came out there and just went from year to year to year to year to year. And a lot of fans are hoping if Wayne performs at the halftime show in New Orleans that he would obviously bring out Nikki and Champagne Thickums. Okay? But here's the thing. Camel Face is in charge of who performs at the halftime show. Okay? And Nikki already has dragged Camel Toe and Desiree Perez, the CEO of Devil Nation, through the mud, okay, a few weeks ago. Now, allegedly, I was told that Wayne, he does want to bring out Nikki if he gets the opportunity to perform at the halftime show and that he would schedule a, you know, a phone call between Nikki and Camel Face so that they can make amends. Okay, so let me know how y'all feel about that. Because, you know, as of right now, Camel Face, you know, he might allow Wayne to perform and possibly Champagne Thickums, but he may say no to Nikki coming on stage because of what she said about, you know, him, Desiree, and Megan Thee Stallion. And he could do that. You know what I'm saying? But imagine if Young Money headlines, that would be iconic. And they can bring out Chris Breezy the Colorist. That would be fire. Nikki could bring out Madonna because she got collaborations with like Madonna, Ariana Grande. I mean, that would be fire. If Young Money come out, that would be a lit show because they got the best catalogs in the game. So hopefully Wayne can get Camel Face and Nikki to resolve their issues so that Nikki could perform. But I think the only way she'll be able to do that is if she be cool with Megan, okay? I don't think that he would, you know, be cool with Nikki if she wasn't cool with Megan Thee Stallion, you know, because his loyalty is with Meg. So let me know how y'all feel about that. You know, Camel Face is a gatekeeper in the industry. He does have a lot of pull and power in the industry. And unfortunately, he does choose who performs. I think it should be Wayne and the Chart Obsessed Races. And Wayne brings out Nikki and Champagne Thickums. And Nikki brings out Ariana Grande. That would be fire. That would be fire. Oh, my goodness. But we got to see what Camel Face says. Okay, because Wayne wants to perform. And he's putting out a new album. Now, moving on from that, Doja Cat smashes a new record with Scarlett. And has now spent three years, 156 weeks in the top 50 on the Billboard 200 album chart. This is the most for any female rapper ever in history. Now, let me know how y'all feel about that. Well, Scarlett was trash, no shade, um, but Planet Her is a very good album. In it. And so I think Planet Her is the reason why she's breaking this record. I definitely don't think it's because of Scarlett. Scarlett was not as good as Planet Her. Y'all can say it's cash cow music or money grab music. She needs to go back to that. Okay, because I don't think Scarlett, she made a lot of cash on that. Okay, especially when you're doing 6K in per sales. And you only got two hits on the album. Nobody's even talking about Scarlett anymore. Like that album has no longevity. No shade. Okay, and you was dressing up as a demon. You had music videos. You had payola. You had playlisting. You had the full nine. Like, and nobody's talking about the album. So I think she needs to go back to the cash grab music. She needs to go back to, you know, what she was doing before. And even with the singles, you know, those singles could have been on Planet Her. 
The Town Is Dead and The Gore Hills, those are pop rap music. So it's not like she put out full rap album. She didn't do that. Okay? She tried, but it didn't work in her favor. No shade. Now, moving on to Criminal B. This is her getting her lick back at Nicki Minaj because Nicki Minaj called Bone Zones a flop. Made fun of the fact that, you know, Criminal B spent $2 million for the Bozos music video, okay, when she was going in on Meg a few weeks ago. And it looks like Cardi B is trying to get a top 10 with a Shakira feature. Allegedly, that's what the streets are saying. And this would be Criminal B's, you know, first top 10 in a good two to three years. She hasn't had a top 10 since 2022. Were yesterday too. But with Shakira, you know, she definitely could possibly get a top 10. And so this is her way of getting her lick back at Nicki Minaj because Nicki Minaj has been making fun of Cardi B's numbers. Okay, so have the Barb's and other fan bases because Criminal B has been putting out music, but nothing has really stuck. Okay, so let me know how you guys feel about it. He sounds good on Spanish records though. No shade. I don't think she sounds that great on Spanish records, in my opinion. Okay, so let me know how y'all feel about that. Now, moving on to Scratch Off. Allegedly, Scratch Off um, is trying to get Megan a Stallion on a record. Now, they already had collaborated on a song on Flopazine called Budget, if you guys remember that record. Um, that record flopped. And so, you know, since Megan Thee Stallion went number one with Piss, Scratch Off is trying to work with Megan Thee Stallion again. Let me know how y'all feel about that. I don't think people would care about a Megan and Scratch Off record, even if they throw shots at Nicki Minaj. Um, if Nicki pays a dust, which she should, um, it's not going to get any steam. Okay, because Scratch Off, she just don't have that type of pull or fan base. And Megan Thee Stallion only charts when she beefing with Nicki Minaj, which was proven with the record Piss. Not only that, Scratch Off is also being exposed for having multiple versions of Side Chick Sunday, okay? And um, it's still not doing well on the charts. Nobody's really streaming it. Currently, she got four to five versions of the song um, trying to get people to buy it, but because Ice Spice is not entertaining, you know, the diss, um, she's hanging out with the chart obsessed races, is flopping on the charts. I'm like, Scratch Off only got like four fans. Why is she trying to put out multiple versions of one song? That's only like four sales. <laughs> well, I guess each Scratch Off fan has to purchase one of the different versions of of Mistress Sunday, and so I guess she thinks that's going to help her on the charts. I really don't think people really care like that. No shade to scratch off, but, you know, she might as well just go and love and hip-hop and call it today because this music career is just not working out for her. You know, how many times can you put on a record and still flop? Like, it don't matter how much shots she takes. It don't matter what the budget is, even though she barely has one. Um, She still don't really chart like that. She's wasting her time. No shade. Moving on to JT, unfortunately, Sideways um, was predicted to debut in the Hot 100, but unfortunately is on the Pale Board bubbling under Hot 100 chart at number seven. And I'm like, damn, this is a good record. Why did y'all let it flop? That don't make no sense. This is what JT was talking about when she said, Oh, so phony got me looking at them sideways. Because y'all only do the fake support on social media. Y'all don't support nothing in real life. I mean, like, goodness gracious, this is a good song. It deserved to chart. Low key, I'm kind of upset about this because I like that song. It deserved to chart. But, you know, JT, you do need a little bit of radio and payola to stay in the Hot 100. So I can see JT debuting in the Hot 100, but will she remain stable? Because you do have to, you know, have radio and playlisting for that. And she don't got that payola package. Unfortunately, QC ain't doing its job. Okay. They dropped the ball. This is way better than Carisha's hot mess of a record called 50-50 was more of a negative zero, in my opinion. Now, moving on to Queen B, 
So a local radio station, KYKC, um, turned down a fan when they requested Texas Hold'em, you know, on the radio station. And they had sent, um, you know, a fan an email basically saying that, you know, they don't play Beyonce. You know, the Beehive was very upset. You know, the Beehive, they don't mess around. And they started spamming you know, the radio station with vicious and evil messages, allegedly. So the radio station put out a statement said, I think we issue a generic reply when we should have been more detailed. If someone emailed our country station and requested a Rolling Stone song, we would have probably replied the same. Queen B is known for not being a country artist, so we just replied to that effect. We are actually excited that she has crossed over to a new genre and we will be watching closely to see if it's a bigger station start playing it and watch it on the chart. We do play the song on our top 40 station, KXFC, but haven't added it to our country station. We are big Queen Bee fans and um, we really hope it does well as we like seeing new artists get into the format okay then after receiving more scrutiny after that statement um they did put the song queen bee's texas hold'em on the kynkc radio station okay power to the people now was this racism because you know queen bee is coming out with a country album so why didn't they play in the first place and even though, you know, I'm not here for Queen Bee's country bumpkin music, I do feel like her music, if it's country, it should get played on country stations. And Columbia has officially sent um, Queen Bee's two singles to country stations. So they won't have a choice but to play it now. And now on top of that, Queen Bee could be, um, you know, debuting. In the top 10 on the Paola Hot 100, possibly at number two with Texas Hold On. And that's only with four days of tracking. Congratulations to the queen. Now, the producer of Texas Hold On, Killa B, was asked if there would be a potential collaboration with the Chart Obsessed Races on Queen Bee's upcoming album. Because if you guys remember, the Chart Obsessed Races used to be a country artist and then she converted over to pop okay and um the producer said let's just say she's on the approach of shocking the world okay so would you guys be here for a chart obsessed races and queen bee collaboration i don't think that would sound good because no shade um you know queen bee's gonna eat up the chart obsessed races vocally you know the chart obsessed races she's more of a writer but she's not vocally as talented as Queen Bee, no way, shape, or form, never will be. Um, but, you know, she's an okay writer, in my opinion. I don't think she's that great of a writer when you're writing songs for 12-year-olds and you're damn near 40, no shade. If you're 35, writing songs for 12-year-olds, can't be that great of a writer. But she's okay, you know what I'm saying? Because she's still winning awards. Now, some fans are saying that Nikki was shading Queen Bee because she tweeted... When everything is given to you, you begin to believe everything belongs to you. Pink Friday 2, Gag City Tour, begins in two weeks. Okay? Now, some people feel like that was shade towards Queen Bee. Y'all was talking about Barbie was shade to um, Nikki. Is this shade of Queen Bee? Saying that, you know, um, Queen Bee does get everything. You know, she is given everything. She never really works super hard for things. Um, and that she thinks that certain things belong to her, let me know. Because that's what people are saying on social media. Now, moving on to Usher. Usher's new album, Coming Home, is aiming for a top three debut on the Pale Aboard 200 album chart with 78,000 units sold first week. Um, This is unacceptable. I don't know who should get donkey of the day. Should it be Usher? Should it be his team? Should it be his label? But somebody needs to get donkey of the day. You performed at the Super Bowl. You have a John Cook collaboration on your album 
with Summer Walker and 21 Below Average. You did a thousand shows or a hundred shows in Vegas. Broke up Kiki and her baby daddy, okay? Humped on Alicia Keys at the Super Bowl and you only doing 78,000 first week? No, absolutely not. No, this is unacceptable. You should at least be doing 100K Usher. This is unacceptable. After all this promotion you've been doing for the past year, this is the best you can do. I'm going to have to give you Donkey of the Day for this. It's, it's, not, it's not looking good. I feel like Usher should be doing 100K first week. I'm sorry. No shade. Moving on to Queen B and Holly. Queen B is stopping Holly's bags. She replied to a fan that said, Release after me. You'll never fall in love again. That's, I guess, a song that she had previewed. Um, and Holly Bailey replied and said, I'm trying tell Columbia with a laughing emoji. Now, Holly is signed to Parkwood Entertainment slash Columbia, and it looks like they are putting a hold on Walmart Yonsei and Holly Bailey's music. Let me know how y'all feel about that. Now, in my opinion, um, Queen B probably used the budget for Holly's music um, and probably Walmart Yonsei for this country bumpkin album that she putting out. Okay, probably didn't think Walmart Yance or Holly were putting out any music considering that Holly got knocked up right after The Little Mermaid. Okay, so, you know, no shade of Holly, but, you know, Queen Bee was already sabotaging you before and then you get knocked up. So she's going to sabotage you even more. <laughs> no shade, but she was like, oh, okay, you. Oh, you want to get knocked up in the prime of your career? Well, I'm just going to use your budget for the remainder of my albums. Not like y'all selling like that anyway. No shade. No shade. But do Holly and Chloe sell like that? No. So it's not like Queen Bee's really losing anything. Okay? But let me know how y'all feel about it. I got some hot tea on Patreon. Link will be in the description. Have a great day.